It's Thursday, November 17th. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download brought to you by Steamfitters Local 602. Get an estimate and learn more at steamfitters-602.org. Today, the smoke cleared from a Gaithersburg, Maryland condo that exploded Monday morning and then broke into gas-fed flames, injuring more than a dozen people. There's just this gaping hole where people's homes used to be. WTOP's John Doman has been at the scene for two days straight, covering the aftermath as crews searched through the debris, looking for potential survivors or those who were killed in the blast. So far, it's unclear if anyone died in the explosion. We just don't know. Like, yeah. it, it, it's easy to speculate, but to be honest, you know, we can't say for sure right now. We just don't know. Thanks for joining us. I'm Luke Garrett. Megan Clorty is off today. School had just started. It was 9 o'clock Wednesday morning when residents in Gaithersburg heard and felt the explosion. I, I can explain to you what it was, but it was terrible. It was the explosion. And in one second, I see the fire destroy everything. What the apartment, see the building. And it felt very much like an earthquake. The windows rattled first and then the building shook. It was probably the biggest cloud of smoke I've ever seen, like, in person. I've only seen stuff like that on TV. It shook the whole building. My dog, who was 60 pounds, decides, ah, I'm scared. I'm going to jump on top of you. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was really bad. It felt like a bomb exploded. A backyard security cam from a nearby apartment captured the sound of the blast. WTOP's John Doman went to the scene in the minutes after the explosion Wednesday morning. And John joins us now with some more details on really what happened here and where the status of this investigation is. John, bring us back to those first moments when you got to the scene Wednesday morning. What did you see? Well, by then, I mean, everything was just like a, a smoldering crater where what it turns out to be nine different condo units had been. And now looking at it, obviously, you know, the smoke is gone, the fire is out, but you have three stories of condo units pretty much smashed into and just collapsed all flattened into one story. This is all mostly a concrete structure. Mm. It's very heavy material and it's there's just this gaping hole where people's homes used to be. And so many people talked to you about the explosion and what they experienced with it. You know, were they in shock? What did they tell you? The size of the explosion was was just massive. It uh, obviously caused panic right away. I spoke this morning with one woman who can't get back into her unit just yet. She said not only did she hear the explosion, she felt the vibration just kind of run right through her body. Mm. Uh, and, and she's kind of a couple of buildings over, if I remember right. She felt it run right through her body when it happened. She looked out, obviously, she saw the fire, just the, the amazing destruction. I mean, it, it was as loud as you could possibly imagine from, mm. from what everybody's told me. Mm. And as you were talking to people in you know the hours after the explosion, a story kind of came about where someone really ran in before firefighters even got there, and this man helped people get out. What was that story? Yeah, there was one guy, um, based on the translation I got, because he speaks Spanish much better than he does English, uh, yeah, he knew there were people inside some of the units there, and he rushed in and grabbed them. Cuando miramos que que estaba agarrando fuego, demasiado fuego, lo primero que buscamos fue a ver si habían personas adentro. It sounded like there was a friend of his sort of spraying him down with a fire extinguisher as he moved through because it, it was such an intense situation. Wow! But he helped get as, as many people as he could out of there, and that included a baby. And I, I heard one woman describing how he going there, and then I scream. I said, "Don't, don't!" But he said, "No, I have to go." And then he bring the people in there. Yeah. So, and then I started crying so bad because you know I know the people in there. She talked about seeing a friend run inside, pull a mother and a baby out, um, having to give the baby CPR. We know that one of the children who, who was hospitalized yesterday was less than a year old. We now know that the only person who's still in the hospital today is, is an adult man mm. out of everybody that was involved in this explosion yesterday. Mm. That's pretty remarkable at this point. Right. But yeah, there, there was definitely some moments of heroism happening because the situation was, was so volatile and, and so extreme and intense, 
but people stepped up to help when other people needed it. Mm. And so we are more than 24 hours out from this initial explosion, but there's still a lot we don't know. But let's cover what we do know. So first off, you know, how many people were hurt and what do we know about their conditions? So they had to revise that number up to 14 today. But that means that four people declined any medical attention um, beyond what they may have gotten at the scene or anything like that. We know that there were uh, eight people taken to the hospital. One of them is still there. Mm. Everybody else has uh, sort of improved themselves since then and, and, and been able to get out. And, you know, that doesn't mean everybody's OK. And, and especially, I mean, not just physically, but also there is psychological trauma that will need to be addressed here going forward. But just of of those that were physically hurt yesterday, yeah, we're down to one person still in the hospital. And a big question mark that is really looming here is, you know, was anyone inside these condos when the blast happened? And, you know, are, are they, you know, dead inside? That's a big question that's still left unanswered. What do we know about that? Yeah, that that is sort of we know we know there's one unit where at least one person is still unaccounted for. Uh, they, they, they took great pains to say that doesn't mean that they're missing. Mm. They're just unaccounted for. And that's the owner of this particular unit. But that doesn't mean that they were inside. That doesn't mean also that uh, they weren't inside and that they weren't with other people. It also doesn't mean that they don't lease that out to somebody else who rents it from them. Right. Somebody else could be in there. Somebody else in their family could be there. Nobody could have been in there. It could mm. be vacant for all we know. Like, there's so much that we don't know. And uh, one of the things the fire chief said this morning was that the time of day that this happened has played a huge role in keeping the number of casualties and fatalities down so low to this point, at least, because at 840, the the elementary school that is right across the street from here, kids were already there. Mm. So a, a lot of the families that were that live in those units in most cases, they were already out having taken their kids to school, having themselves already gotten on their way to work. You know, if this happened at a different time, the the story could be even all the much more tragic than what it is right now. Mm. Um, that's just a lucky thing right now. But, yeah, there's one unit I accounted for. They brought canines to the situation, canines that can detect human remains, canines that can detect if somebody is alive or not. Wow. And, I mean, there's only so close they can get because a lot of the structure is still so – unsafe to be near but at least where the dogs the limited scope that the dogs have been able to get near they've not detected anything Mm. hopefully that means something but again you know that's we just don't know like it's easy to speculate but to be honest you know we can't say for sure right now we just don't know so what is the work that lies ahead of investigators and fire crews at this point and you know, is there any sort of light timeline where we would really know answers to these questions? So so we have basically a building and a half of units, nine units total that are completely demolished right now that, you know, went from being a three story garden style condo building to just a mass of rubble that's mm. pretty much condensed and pancaked down into one story's worth of debris and stuff. A lot of the structure, again, like I said, is concrete. So not only is it, you know, all flattened down, it's a heavy flat, too. Mm. They have to go through all of that rubble now. Um, Obviously, when they got here, they knew that a gas main was feeding the flames when they got here. But they took great pains to, to say that it's too early to say for sure that this was caused by a gas explosion. But part of the investigation, go through all nine units worth of stoves and ovens because mm. those were gas powered uh, appliances the dryers were gas powered there, there's going to be some other things in there that that kind of run on gas you have to look at each and every single one of those from those nine units to see if, if maybe something happened there that sparked everything else and then you have to go through and, and you know if the answer is no you have to also look through at all the other things that were inside those units that may have sparked some kind of an explosion There's a lot to go through here and it's all buried and it could take some time. I mean, this is going to be a long process to get everything out of those condos, you know, just to get through that whole, that pit of rubble. Right. Um, But you have to go through all of that to figure out and, and, you know, look for the evidence and figure out where the blast came from. Now, since 2016, three 
apartment buildings or condo buildings such as this one have kind of exploded with some sort of gas-related fire and blast. Do we know if there's any common thread between the two? Did officials today speak to that at all? It's weird how that has all, like, of all those kinds of incidents, they've only happened in Montgomery County Mm. and nowhere else. But the circumstances, at least in the first two, are, are completely different. One, there was clearly a failure somewhere that caused that. It happened just after midnight. Everybody was home and asleep. Mm. The destruction was all the more worse because in, in, a, in a dense community style living structure, everybody was there. The one that happened earlier this year, that involves somebody who just made a mistake and, and cut a pipe that wasn't supposed to be cut. Mm. That's not something, you know, that the government can really do or anything with that. It's that was human error right. um, in the most unfortunate sense. And then you get to this situation, and again, it's it's too early to say. We don't know what caused this situation to go the way it did. So while it's, it's, it's clearly eerie that it's all happened like this here in Montgomery County, and those questions are being asked, especially by the residents who live here, right. why does it keep happening in Montgomery County? The answer is right now that the first two situations were – completely different one was completely preventable in that it was caused by human error and then for this third situation again it goes back to just we don't know yet right what caused this and then you know once we do know then you know depending on what the circumstances are the county can do something maybe the state can do something if that's something that could be preventable at that level mm. but it's again it's a mystery at this point well john there's a lot of details to this case but there's also a big human element thank you for bringing both to us here you got it luke And after the break, goals for bulls. We'll tell you what it means and what you'll get out of it after the break. Backed by the experience of its hardworking members, Steamfitters Local 602 is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, HVAC, or refrigeration project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602. Changing lives. Explain your DNA on on 10 cases, man. You're inside the police interrogation room with the alleged Potomac River rapist. I'm not guilty on any of this stuff. So calm, so reasonable. Could this be the man who terrorized women for nine years before murdering a brilliant scientist two decades ago? Experience one of the most fascinating true crime podcasts available. Join crime reporter Paul Wagner for Unknown Subject, season three of WTOP's American Nightmare series. Search American Nightmare Podcast on all podcast platforms. And before we go, bowls for goals. I told you about it before, but we got Thomas Robertson in the studio to tell us what it means. What the heck does bowls for goals mean, Thomas? That's combining two excellent things that I think we all love. Which are? Goals. (laughs) And by that, I mean goals scored by the U.S. men's national team during the World Cup, which is coming up. Starts on Sunday. Yeah. Their first game, though, is on Monday. Wales. Yep. Two o'clock. Lock in because a new promotion, partnership, I should say, with Chipotle, the men's national team. That's where the bowls come in. Okay. Every time (laughs) the men's national team scores a goal, you've got a chance to get a free bowl or a burrito if you prefer. Which wow, which opens up the debate. Quite a hot topic. Is a burrito better than a bowl? Yes. Flat out. Better. What about, what if you get a bowl, but you get the tortilla on the side? See, that's what I you're do. Not gonna, you're not going to be. Not the same? No. You can't make it as good. Dude, you get more, you, you get more food in the bowl. But more food is not always better, you know? Quality, quantity type of thing. You're you kind of a density mean? guy. You want you get that good density. You get it all packed in there. Plus, sometimes you might not be in a situation where you have time and have the resources to That's true. create you, your own burrito. You might be on the move. That's true. You also need two hands to eat a burrito bowl. Right. But a burrito, you can just you can of, you slide in your pocket, take I, it out, eat it, put it back in there. Wow. Well, you can win one if you watch... The U.S. men's team score some goals. Let's hope that happens. Let's hope they score. You got to be locked in 
right. to, to cash in here because only Wait, every is it goal. Unlimited b- bowls? Not, not unlimited. It's not like the steal a base, steal a taco thing with the World <laughs> Series Taco Bell. You got to be ready to go. Once they score a goal, Chipotle will tweet out on Twitter and maybe their other socials as well. They're going to send out a code. Okay. And you got to text that code to a specific number. And the first 5,000 that do that for every goal will get in return in that text message they'll get a a a code to cash in for one free entree. All right, goal. US scores a goal. I go to Chipotle slash US men's team Twitter. And just keep refreshing. And there's a code there. there there'll be a code. There'll be a code. I get that code. Text I, it. I text it. Boom. To eight 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 two two two. Oh, you got the number. Yeah, I got the go. number, dude. There you go. And then that's it. I just want to get listeners some free bowls and free burritos. I you mean, heard it here first. Or maybe you've already knew about it, but reinforced. Probably not. And that'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. We're sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602. Our music is by Real World. Give us a review and rate our show if you get the chance. You can find us on social media. We're posting content every day. You can also find us at dmvdownload.com. The DMV Download podcast is, of course, a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in the D.C. area, 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, Maryland, online at WTOP.com, and, of course, on the WTOP News app. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.